Happy Mother's Day Amen. to all the mamas. Always got to remember one thing, if it wasn't for you, we wouldn't be here. Wouldn't be here. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. But it's good to be back in the house of the Lord. Amen. 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 Praise God. All right, we're going to start out with a song called Holy Spirit, Thou Art Welcome. And we know that the Holy Spirit's already here. When we come, you can just feel it when you walk through the doors. His presence is already here. Yeah, he walks in the door with you. That's right, amen, praise God. We bring him with us, don't we? That's right. Amen, praise the Lord. I'm glad to see my mom here today, too. Praise the Lord. Been a long time. Yeah. All right, Holy Spirit, thou art welcome. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. 
Lord, we welcome your presence, Lord. Hallelujah. You are welcome, Lord Jesus, in this place today, Lord. This is your house, Lord. And you are welcome, hallelujah, your Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Praise your blessed holy name. All right, we're going to do another one right now. This is, a, this is an old song, an old hymn of the, the church. It's called, I Saw the Light. How many saw the light? Oh, yeah. Amen. We used to be in darkness. We're not in darkness anymore, are we? Praise God. Hallelujah. The Bible says to let your light so shine. Yes. That men may see your works and glorify Amen. the Father. Amen. And that's why we're here. To let our light shine and worship the Lord. So we're going to sing, I saw the light. It's, it's really hard because you're used to the music and usually the piano player follows the song leader but this soundtrack stuff it's it's just hard to get used to hey amen Really? That's right. Right. Amen. 
You are so right about that, brother. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. All right, we're going to do another one for you right now. Everyone knows this one, though. Jesus Messiah. I tell you what, we were going to record this, this next recording we had, but it just didn't work out that way. But I still like to try to record it. Uh -huh. But anyhow, we're going to do it to the glory of God, Amen. Jesus Messiah. Amen. And he is our Messiah. Hallelujah. Our soon coming king.
Hallelujah. Praise God. Can we sing that just one more time? We don't, we don't need the music, do we? We have our voices, don't we? So let's just sing the chorus, okay? Jesus Messiah, name above all names, blessed Redeemer, blessed Redeemer, Emmanuel, Emmanuel, the rescue for sinners, the rescue for sinners, the ransom from heaven, the ransom from heaven, Jesus Messiah, Jesus Messiah, Lord of all. Let's sing at the end, Jesus Messiah. Was just way too slow. So we're just going to do it without music. I just want to hear your voices. Just lift up your voices to the Lord, okay? Can you get it the right key here? <laughs> Bill, you want to help me out, brother? Uh, he will. All right, here we go. You were the word at the beginning. One with God. Again, 
above all other names. Amen. And demons, they have to flee. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Praise God. I'm going to ask my mother, it is Mother's Day, if she will come up and if she'll sing a song. Now, everyone knows that we don't have Bill here to play the piano, so I don't know if Mary Ann wants to come up and try to do this song. Well, I think it might be the grass is greener on the other side. It's been a long time since mom's been here. She is 84 years old now. Yes, 84 years young. She'll probably remember the words and I'll probably forget them. But we're going to do it anyway. You want to testify? All right, test. Let her testify. We'll see. I think. Thank the Lord for being saved. Amen. Amen. Saved me a long time ago, ma'am. I had the most. And I thank the Lord. I'm thank. I keep saying, Lord, I know what He's saying from that trumpet blow. Amen. You'll take me home. Amen. I know He will take me home. Amen. Amen. Praise his lovely name. Amen. 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 Am
saying we're celebrating mothers today so god bless and special blessings upon all the mothers that we have here this song i'm going to sing is called dad and mom and uh, it's for us that uh, have our parents that have went on before us uh, is what this song's about so uh, i'm going to try and sing it for for us um 
Also, we got to remember they're so much better off than we are. Yes, they are. Uh, as the song says, they're walking hand in hand with Jesus Amen. out there. Yes, they are. Wow. Yes, they are. I cannot wait till the day that we get to join them. Amen. That's yes. the key. Amen. Say, I like that. that for Mama. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. For Mama. I like that jacket myself. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm going to steal my jacket now. <laughs> <laughs> Don't take it off. The Bible says if your brother needs a jacket, that's right. That's right, brother. I'll share. <laughs> All right. I'm going to try and sing this song. It's uh, number 800. It's called Dad and Mom. <coughs> Dad and Mom, I'd like to thank you for giving me your love. In times when I'd stumble and I'd fall, you gently pick me up. With love so tender and so real, you guide me on my way. If it had not, been for love and prayer, I wouldn't be here today. In sin, shaped in iniquity, we were born into this world. But God wanted our soul set free. So he gave his only son. They hung him high there at Calvary. His precious blood was shed just for you and me. And through that precious blood, I have such liberty and peace within my soul. And mom, they left us many years ago. They're walking with the Savior where the living waters Then me, Mom, Dad, and Jesus We'll all walk side by side Dad and Mom, thank you for your love In closing, may I say That you, Mom and God, you've made me what I am today. Through pain, blood and sweat and tears, you held me by the hand. Through those uncertain years, I'm holding to God's hand. And now I have no fear For heaven's way I go Mom and Dad, they left us Many years ago They're walking with the Savior Where the living waters flow. Sooner or later, I'll cross 
the great divide Then me, mom, dad, and Jesus We'll all walk side by side Yes, me, mom, dad, and Jesus We'll all walk side by side See, brother, we even have trouble with soundtracks sometimes, too. So. I think it worked out good. I think it perfect. Sorry, we just finished a cappella, huh? <laughs> Outreaches to go for your glory, Jesus, for your honor, and we want them to go for, and do what they should do. And I know, Jesus, with you in control and you in charge, it will be done. And we thank you for that we are able to do our outreaches. Thank you, Jesus, and we give you the praise. Amen. Amen. Well, we want to welcome everybody this morning, and uh, we want to say happy Mother's Day to all the mothers that are here. Um, and uh, on live stream and uh, you know you don't have to be you don't have to give you don't have to have given birth to a child to be a mother yep. there's a lot of people that are that are mother um, they just have that motherly instinct and so they will they'll mother uh, <laughs> Somebody's car is beeping. So we we know that, that these mothers, now there's a lot of mothers that have children that, that uh, they just don't have that same instinct. Y'all see that a lot. And you can see that on television. They don't have that instinct. They're, they're, they allow their children to be hurt. And they don't seem to do anything about it. Uh, you, you can see the animal kingdom, uh, you can see uh, bears and things like that, they protect their children. Uh, some of them will reject them, but just like, the, you know, when God made male and female, he made them to reproduce, to have children, to take care of their children, take care of their young, and they do it. So we want to thank the mothers for all that they do, but you re got to remember something. When you think about how much we love our children and our grandchildren and the great grandchildren, God loves them more than what we do. And that's, that's the beauty of God. God is pure love. He doesn't have love. He is love. So when we think about our children, and our grandchildren, we just need to know God loves them more. So, uh, excuse me. So let's go to Matthew 11. started this when he was here. I, I was, this was a thing that I had got before Frank was here for the revival, but I was thinking about this before the revival, and then he came along and took it. <laughs> but we're going to take it again today. And it's um, the 11th chapter of Matthew, and it's the, um, starting with the 28th verse. We're going to do some verses like that today. Everybody got it? Yep. 
Now the very first it says, come unto me. So that's what that's what he's saying. Come unto me. All ye that are that are labored, <coughs> all ye that la that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Now so this is a, a plan he says. I want you to come to me. You know, when you when you get to thinking about this, he says, Come unto me. He's, he's calling all of us to come unto him and to la and, and that labor. And are heavy laden. That means it's a heavy burden. If you're if you're heavy laden with something, if you have a heavy heart, if your heart is heavy for over a situation, and you're laboring, and this is this, and I will give you rest. I'll give you rest. And this world is something that we really need to be praying about. Now this ought to be heavy on our hearts because the world is just spinning out of control. Amen. But God is in control. Amen. So therefore, we just have to go with the flow and we have to rest in him knowing that he is in control. But it's not always easy. Well, maybe it's not for you. And maybe it's you guys are perfect. I am not. <laughs> but it says right there, and then it says right there the next verse, it says, it says take, take my yoke upon you and learn of me and for I am meek and lonely in heart and ye shall, and ye shall find rest unto your soul, unto your mind, your will, and your emotions. You'll find rest. But right there it says it says you take your take take my yoke. Well what's his yoke? Love, joy, peace, gentleness, kindness, meekness. That's the yoke of God. That's that's not our yoke is envy, strife, doubt, fear, unbelief. That is a heavy yoke up around me. Now you know when we were when I was younger we used to have cattle and they would put a yoke around the cow. And the reason that yoke was put up on that cow is to keep that cow from jumping the fence. Getting over into another pasture which is not which was not ours. To keep that cow in. To put her make her stay in that field. But you know, God says my yoke is easy. We don't have to keep jumping out here into sin if we will just learn to rest in God. Because when you don't rest in God, you become anxious. You become worried. You start to worry about things. You become anxious about things. You decide that maybe your way is better. You have no faith in God to believe God will do what he says he'll do when he says he'll do it. And when he says he'll do it, he will do it. So we need to learn to rest in him, to cast our cares over on him. That's what it says. And it says right here, it says, it says his yoke is easy. Our yoke we make hard. Because of ourselves, because of the way we are. And Satan comes along and says, you know, you're never, that's never going to happen for you. You're never going to get it. You'll never be able to do that. That is a heavy yoke to keep you and I from doing what God calls us to do. We need to take the yoke off and take on the yoke of Jesus, Amen. which is love and joy and peace. I mean, my goodness, do you know how good it is to walk in the peace of God? Do you know how, how joyful it is to have that love flow through you? Even when people are ugly to you, you turn it, you turn and you say, you know, it doesn't make any difference to me. I forgive you. I'm going to walk in the peace of God. Amen. I'm going to walk in gentleness. And that's what God says. That's his yoke. That's what I'm taking on me. So when we start walking up on that, it says, he says, and he said, he's meek and lonely. Now, when you look up the meek, the word meek, because I was looking it up, it actually, it actually means it's a humble. He humbled himself. Did Jesus not humble himself? Yes, he did. Did he not come from the most beautiful place in the world, which was heaven? Yes. Did he not come down here and go into hell for you and I? Yes. He humbled himself. Yes. 
Well, and, you know, people won't, people, a lot of Christians, they say, well, I'm not going to, I'm not going to forgive, I'm not going to humble, I'm not going to do this. Well, let me tell you what, hell awaits you. That's just the way it's going to be. Because unless you have a humble spirit, you're not going to make it. Because he said, he said, you take that up on you. And then a lonely, it means, it, lowly, it means to be, uh, have a grateful heart. Do you have a grateful heart for what God's doing for you? Do you have a grateful heart for the mother you've had? You have a grateful heart. This is Mother's Day. Do you have a grateful heart? Do you have this heart that wants to, to and you can remember the good things about your mother. If anybody in here has had a good mother, they remember the things that they do, the funny things they do, the cooking they did, whatever they did. That is the greatest thing you can have is these good memories. Well, whenever you have, whenever you have these yokes upon you, you can't remember anything good. Because you're so busy with that yoke around your neck instead of taking the Lord's yoke, which is an easy yoke, which his burdens are light. They're not a heavy burden. I mean, to walk in the love of God is certainly not heavy unless you make it. And it's your choice. And then it says that there, it says, and for my yoke is easy and my burdens are light. Right there, I just told you. His yoke is an easy yoke. And it does not keep you from doing things. A lot of people think, well, you know, if you're a Christian, if you're a Christian, you can't do this, you can't do that. No. The main thing of it is you put God first. Amen. Amen. And when you put God first, he said, I'll add all this to you. You can, you can, you can go, you can have fun. Best time of your life should be with a Christian friend. You should be. We have more fun here than anything else. We're not. We're not a church. It's not fun. We make fun of people, and they're the people in the church we make fun of. And then there's some people that are out of the church. We make fun of them while they're sitting at the house with a bad leg. We have a. We have a lot of fun. We, we have a lot of fun. Those are people. This is the this is the thing. This is the joy of the Lord. Yes, right. And He knows we love Him dearly. Yes, yes. So it's not like we're just standing up here making fun of Him. I mean, we have a good time. See, that yoke is not a heavy yoke. It's a light yoke. Take my yoke. It's light. Don't have something that you know. A lot of people think that you have to be, you know, just so down and you never smile, you never do. And my dad used to say, "It's look like a mule, an old mule eating briars." <laughs> you know, you have you have no you have no facial expression. You just, you know, you're just hateful. And let me tell you what: God is not hateful. God is love. And when you look at somebody, you need to see God in them. And not somebody who's downbeaten. If somebody's downbeaten all the time, then you either need to come in and under, undergirt them with the love of God and show them the way. Amen. Let your light shine. Let your love permeate them. Yes. Let your light do what God has called it to do. And when you do that, you don't have to worry about taking these burdens. <clears throat> Let's go to, uh, I already told you this in First Peter. <clears throat> Sometimes you get ahead of yourself and then you don't know where you're going when you have to get there. As long as you get there. As long as you get there, I guess you're all right. First Peter 5, 7. Now let's go to, um, we're going to start with, um, let's start with verse 5. 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 5. And let's see what it says about what we're to be like. It says, Likewise, you younger, <clears throat> submit yourself unto the elder. Yea, all ye be in subject one to another, to be clothed with humility, for God resists the proud and gives grace to the humble. Now, I just used humble on the other one and, you, and, and used the uh, proud. So you can, I mean, use the... Um, the, uh, I, what did I use in that one? Well, anyhow, to, to have yourself in a, in a position, to, and it says, likewise, you younger ones, submit yourself unto the elder. 
we need to submit ourselves one to another. And if you do that, it says you're submitted to one another and you'll be clothed in humility. You won't be haughty. And then it says, and it, for God resists the proud and he gives grace to the humble. Having a humble, meek heart. That was the other word, meek. Having a heart, a heart that is meek and humble. And then it says, and then humble yourself, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. Mm -hmm. Humbling yourself before God. Bringing yourself into a place where you can say to God, and have I ever said this? I have no idea what I'm doing. And Lord, when I make mistakes, and he told me, he said, when you make mistakes, he said, I will correct them before they become mistakes. Amen. Yes. Yeah. Thank and see, that's, that's the, that right there is, is, is that his mighty hand, the God's hand, has touched you, and he has touched you. He's humble yourself, therefore, in the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you. We don't exalt ourselves, but we know who we are in Christ Jesus. Yes. We know that we've made him the Lord of our life. Yes. We know that we're special to him. We know that we're his child. We know that we're his servant. We know that Lord, we know these things, but if you be, have, have a haughty mind and a haughty spirit, you will never know that because you're so much into yourself and self can get you into more trouble than, than anything else. Because then you get to thinking, well, you know, I know more. And you know, you say, I want to be like God. You want to be likened unto God. You'll never be God. Now, the devil tried that. And he messed himself up really big time. And he was clothed with every instrument. And he was very, and he became very proud. And he became very haughty. And God said, are you serious? Who do you think you are? Well, you know, he, if he would say that to the devil, to whom he made, and he made us in his image. So he, 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 you know, he's just as much feminine as he is masculine. And all the parts of the woman came through the man. And it came through God because God made, and he made man, and then he made man, and he made a man with a womb, a womb man. So when you see that, he's made everything. Everything is, is made by him and for him. The Bible tells you that. Everything is made by him and for him. So every animal is made for him, and every human is made for him. And he made male and female to reproduce and to, to fill the, the earth. And that's still happening today. You have dogs, you have horses. They all still continue to have their babies. People, men and women. He's still multiplying. But he still wants us to be humble. A humble and that we might that humble yourself, therefore, unto the mighty hand of God, that he, may, <clears throat> that he may exalt you in due time, casting all of your cares... Up on him, for he what? Care for you. This is what we're talking about when I said over there in the, in the, when I did the one over there in Matthews. When I said over there that the burdens are light. His yoke is easy. Amen. But unless we learn to cast Amen. our cares upon him, then that yoke and those burdens will become extremely, very heavy to where we cannot carry them and we will fall under the load because it's too heavy for us. He did not make us to carry the load. He took that load upon the cross of Calvary. He took every sin, every sickness, every disease, every doubt, every fear, every unbelief, anything that is against God, he took it upon the cross of Calvary. And he went into hell and he defeated the devil over that, over us. The devil does not rule over us. 
We are to rule over him. But we will never rule over him unless we start learning to cast the cares over onto him. See, he said, I care for, he says, cast all. He didn't say cast just a little bit of your cares. All of your cares over on, up on him, for he careth for you. And it says, be, be sober, be vigilant. And because your adversary, the devil, is he not the adversary? Yes, he is. The adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion walking about, seeking whom he may devour. Now, whenever you don't cast your cares upon him, when you're taking that yoke upon yourself and you're taking those heavy burdens upon yourself, then you're giving the devil a way in. That's what you're doing. You're opening the door for the devil to come in and for the devil to take hold of it. Because see, he says he walks around like a roaring lion. And did you know it didn't say he had any teeth? He is teethless, or toothless, or whatever you want to call it. He has nothing to eat you with. Why? Because Jesus defeated him. Amen. Jesus defeated him. He is a defeated foe, but he goes around and he roars like he can take. A, he can whip you. He can't not whip you. When you have the blood of Jesus over your life, Satan cannot whip you. Amen. He cannot. But if we don't know that, and if we don't realize that we have a covenant with him, if we still think we're having the yokes and the heavy burdens upon us, and we haven't realized that we are to cast them over on him, then he has a way in, and he will destroy not only you, but your family. Yes. And people doesn't, they, they, we do not realize, he does, the devil does not work for just today. He works for 10 to 20 to 30 years down the line, and he works to go through one, one generation to another generation to another generation. He works constantly to destroy his, the family of God. That's his old thing. But if we learn to say, you know, you're my children, my grandchildren, my great-grandchildren, I'm casting them over on you, Father. You take care of them because I can't. Amen. Now, when we start talking like that, then the devil doesn't, he, he doesn't have no teeth, he just stand there, no teeth. Because he, yeah. It's, it's, it's like one of the ladies one time when, when her, uh, her, her cat, I said, well, there's a mouse in the basement. And she said, well, she went down to see about the mouse. And she had a cat that was seven, about 17 years old and had no teeth. <laughs> she came back up and she said, <clears throat> Sooty gummed him to death. <laughs> Well, see, you see, the devil, the devil will try to gum us because he has no teeth. He cannot bite us, but he will try his very best to gum you because he, has, he doesn't have any defense. He has no defense over someone who's serving God. But see, if we don't realize it, we give in. And you know, when, 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 a lot of times when people pray, and they want God to answer that prayer right now. Well, God can't answer your prayer right now most of the time. Sometimes he can, sometimes he will. But there's times you're going to have to wait on God. Amen. And, you know, it may be 10, 20, 30 years. But don't give up and don't give in. Whip the devil every time he tells you, it's not going to work this time. My kid's not coming out of this. My kid's never going to straighten up. No, you start saying, my kid can, my kid will. My kids has got good testimonies. My, my children will testify for God. My children will do this. My children will do that. See, you start edifying God over what you're doing, and you start beating the devil, and the devil hears you saying it, and once you speak those words out, then it's seed, and when the seed starts growing, then that's exactly what's going to happen. Our children will have testimonies. Our grandchildren will have testimonies. So we're going to have these testimonies. We're going to have to walk. Amen. But let me tell you what, if we do not learn to cast these problems over onto God, mm -hmm. then we're going to be stuck with the yoke mm -hmm. around our neck. And we're going to st be stuck with the burden, yes. 
that lays us down to where we cannot move. And we will be right there. He will be a roaring lion, and he will come to your mind, and he will tell you, you know, that child is so far gone that it'll never come back. No. How many times have you seen, uh, have you ever read some of the stories of some of these ministers of God that have been totally whacked out on cocaine and God has came down and picked them up out of the mouth. See, he can t he'll come down and take them right out of the merry clay. He'll come right down there and take them out of the pit. But see, our thing is to cast that care because once we start caring all the time and we try to do this and we try to do that, then we get in God's way and God has to stop. Our best thing is to say, I'm casting this care over on you. And then you send somebody that they will listen to. Give it to God and walk away from it and say, God, it's in your hands. You said in your word that all my children be taught of the Lord. Great shall be the peace of my kids. See, that's what you've said, Lord. And you've said in your, in your word that for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. I see, that's casting your care. That right there is casting your care. Because, see, your kids are your care. Because, see, you want them to serve. See, if you, if you wasn't serving God, if you was out here in the world, you wouldn't care less if they served God or not. But since we've made Jesus Christ the Lord of our life, we care. And we say, Lord Jesus, my goodness, you know, if, if it be me, you'd just like a collie dog picked up an old rat and shook it. That's what you really want to do to the kids. Because, see, you see what they could have and what they could do. You see that. But, see, they don't see it. So that's why we have to ask God to show. Open their eyes, Lord. Yes. Open their eyes. Amen. That's what it says in Ephesians, that, they might, that their eyes might be enlightened. Open up their eyes and let God do something. Yes. So we'll get a song to sing. And then Marianne will get us a song and then we'll get ready. The altar is always open. Number 71 in the hymn books. 71 in the hymn books. Barbara just preached on putting your cares upon the Lord. This song says, must Jesus bear the cross alone and all the world go free? No, there's a cross for all of us to bear. But his burden is light. Yes. As Barbara just preached, but you must pick up the cross and follow him. Amen. That's what he says in his word. Pick up the cross and follow me, he says. So he can't do it alone. He needs us.
Thank you for watching Zor House of Prayer's live broadcast. We stream live every Sunday morning and would like to invite you to come out and be in service with us. Sunday school starts at 10 a.m. and morning worship begins at 11 a.m. We are located three and a half miles past the Morgantown Mall on 19 South. Take a right onto Sugar Grove Road for a mile and the church sits on the right with a sign at the foot of the hill. Thank you and God bless.